Hi students, so now we will restart our uh, computer vision course now. Uh, we will now switch to the online mode. What I plan to do now is I would make some uh, uh, videos recorded. I will record the videos. I upload them and uh, then we will be having a Zoom session, a conference call where uh, we would be uh, trying to clarify your doubts rather than having the whole lecture on Zoom. So what is expected is you will go through these videos in detail uh, at your home and then we will uh, discuss and get your doubts clarified and if you have any questions, concerns, those things we will try to address in the uh, Zoom video. Okay, let's start. Uh, so earlier uh, in our classes we worked, we have finished uh, the a key point we started for example the continuity of uh, uh, the topics were key point detection key point description it is followed by key point uh, transformation key point matching right and then parameter estimation now we will be moving into an application mode and the topic would be uh, motion estimation and more specifically we would be talking about motion estimation using optical flow based uh, approaches okay this lecture would be more focused on more of an introduction to motion estimation and from the next class onwards we will uh, move on to optical flow based methods okay uh, before i go uh, let me acknowledge here that uh, this is uh, highly uh, like inspired like some of the slides have been adapted based on Professor R. N. Bobbick's lectures on Audacity um, on the introduction to computer vision course. So you would see some of these slides repeating from his presentations. Okay, you are encouraged to go, that's a very good course. You, are, you, you could go through, it's a free online course, go through it and then that's also you can learn a lot from that. Again, Professor R. N. Bobbick himself would be mentioning that he has adapted uh, slides from various other sources. So some of them were mentioned here. Okay. Uh, so, you once you see any of the related courses, you will see a lot of the slides in common. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, start the motion estimation thing. Um, by the way, what do we mean by motion when we look at it in terms of a computer vision problem? Essentially, that's a question slightly differently posed is image versus a video. Or what we perceive as a motion is essentially uh, so when you are looking at images that have been captured uh, of moving objects that have been captured with a slight delay in time is essentially appears like motion okay for example this is one gif image okay uh, which is repeatedly playing so you just simply have when the wind is blowing how the uh, trees the leaves of the trees are moving this is one example okay uh, and now uh, so as we seen uh, this is a uh, video we are coming to the video part now it's nothing but a sequence of frames captured over time uh, the earlier applications we discussed you have an image which means spatially you have x and y now in addition to x and y you have over the time the image is captured at different instances of time that's what and it is between the consecutive frames when we are doing the analysis for estimating the motion well what could be the applications of it this is again uh, we would just touch upon few possible applications of it where you come across this one of them is for example uh, you want to do a background subtraction uh, you, you could do it for different purposes for example you might be recording you you'd be looking at this video itself whichever is there as a thumbnail there and then you want to change the background so you would then would like to see what are the motions that are there in the face or in the hands okay and then based on that you figure out what is the background that is static and then you could replace with something else that's one possible application right and another application you could think of is <clears throat> segmentation on finding out the boundaries of different uh, shots that are uh, continuous for example let's say here in the bottom of the slide you will see an example where there is a sudden change in a sudden transition of the shot so if you are tracking you looking at how the pixels have moved 
from one frame to the other when you see a sudden movement uh, beyond a particular value threshold that is where you could figure out that there is a sudden transition here so that's something one could figure out uh, automatically in a given video sequence for certain purposes uh, this also you could use this is one application that you could think of for motion estimation <clears throat> and even more practical application is for example um, you would like to detect various uh, objects that are there in a given video sequence so how would you do for example you could start with uh, an assumption that each object is going to move coherently say let's say i am moving my two hands so you want to get the segmentation of those two hands so one thing you could assume is each hand is moving coherently or the face is moving coherently or it could be uh, in any video that you have recorded there could be multiple vehicles going on and <clears throat> you could make an assumption that each of the vehicle uh, it's a fair assumption that they are moving coherently and then you could think of lot of applications uh, derived from that let's say counting the number of vehicles where you could additionally make use of the motion information and even uh, you could use it for even uh, static segmentation let's say you want to this is one classical example you would find out in lot of places uh, on by how motion could be useful for even segmenting the objects so <clears throat> you could see here uh, the object is for example the mongoose and the snake are the ones you would like to find a segmentation they are uh, very much seamlessly um, having a very similar texture uh, as the rest of the background so for example there if you have the motion and if this has been captured over time and there if you look at the motion of the pixels that then that is when you could segment those objects right and another thing is the mosaicing uh, this again we have seen this application in a different context earlier for key point detection and uh, then matching and other things again this example is where uh, the scene is too large to fit into the lens of your camera uh, zoom and resolution so what you are doing here is you have captured it one thing you could by moving your camera so th there is a motion there if you estimate the motion of your camera then you could appropriately stitch them all together and this is what you could end up okay of course you could have even if there is a movement of uh, let's say those flights while you are moving it uh, with an appropriate model even you could compensate for the movement of those uh, uh, objects within your uh, scene and then you could uh, make a nice uh, mosaicing of all those things together okay this is another classical example you will find out in a uh, lot of mid, uh, computer vision videos is for example the if you have if you notice closely there is a moving square uh, within that uh, big square okay you could see it has the same texture and if you look at in a single uh, image of that in other words in any frame you could hardly see that object but on the contrary uh, if you have the information of the uh, frames if you have this over time that's when you could clearly see in the middle an object moving and you should be able to uh, segment that again this is a very synthetic uh, tyler made example to uh, give you the motivation on why this is, would be required okay yeah this is by no means an exhaustive list of applications of motion estimation but other things will be segmentation of objects in space or time okay and estimating so for example an object is moving you have segmented that object in one frame and in the consecutive frame you want to find out the same object okay so this you could use a, as an assuming that the motion is not too high uh, in terms of the number of pixels so what you could do here is you could simply find out this object you start that as an initialization there and then you estimate the motion of it that's how you could get it there okay and then uh, the another thing is learning dynamical models how things move uh, okay this is for example you want to estimate for example one application one of the colleagues is working is cloud estimation to see for for the forecasting weather forecasting okay there also this motion estimation would help to see how the clouds are moving another thing uh, for example there is a recording of video you have surveillance cameras 
from that if you want to see and recognize some abnormal activities again you need to do how things are moving so motion estimation would be required and then while recording something assume that there is a uh, movement or a zerky thing happening in the camera so again if you could appropriately estimate that you could get an improved video quality so this is another application that you could think as i mentioned by no means this is an exhaustive list you could see more and more little later as you move on okay now we'll come back to the part on how motion estimation techniques uh, can be broadly classified into two categories okay uh, one of the first one is feature based uh, methods and the other one is direct dense based methods what do you mean by feature based methods uh, for example uh, instead of using the information that is there in the entire image what you would do is you would extract some key points within that image right and then you find out this is uh, again in the another frame you again extract key points you try to find a mapping of them and then image transform so this is exactly what you you could do with the help of the techniques that we have already computer vision algorithms that we have discussed in our earlier classes let's say you start with uh, harris corner detector you find out key points then let's say shift descriptor you uh, encode them uh, you get the unique signatures of those points and then you use a um, yeah, image transforms to find out uh, the matching between the points and do a parametric fitting of those points so this is what we have done so the first part we will not be going any further into it and uh, uh, just uh, and it is what is of our more interest uh, for the coming lectures including this lecture would be the direct dense methods this would be of our interest for us by the way if you compare feature based methods versus direct dense methods one thing that you could see is the earlier one feature based methods are sparse motion methods right because you are not getting you are not looking at how each pixel is moving rather what you are looking at is how some key points are moving there okay uh, so that that is how you are not getting it at every pixel but on the contrary it has an advantage as well this is very robust to tracking because you have seen earlier that these key points are very reliable to detect and map so that's the advantage it, you, it comes up with. Then you, you, you basically there's suitable, these are particularly suitable when the image motion is very large, some tens of pixels motion is there. You would see shortly in uh, uh, these uh, optical flow based methods will be of uh, with sub pixel accuracy and hardly two, three uh, pixels around that if there is a motion that it could effectively do it. So that's why you go for feature based methods, okay, usually when the image motion from one frame to the consecutive frame is very high, which is of the order of tens of pixels, okay. On the contrary, the direct dense methods is, you call it as dense because you are going to get the motion estimation at every pixel. So the estimation of this motion is very dense. So you call it as dense methods. So and. Uh, they recover image motion at each pixel from spatio-temporal image brightness variations. Okay, so you call it spatio because there is an x y an image. You call it temporal because you have it t t instances of t t plus one t plus two and so on. And your mapping would be you will see in the next uh, video lecture that this uh, mapping would be essentially based on the brightness uh, intensity values of the pixel. So this is essentially based on um, uh, spatio-temporal image brightness variations, okay? As we discussed, this gives dense motion fields, okay? But they are sensitive to appearance variation. So, uh, if there are small changes in the appearance, they're stretching or contract, contracting in small regions also, since this is dense, this will be able to capture those things. And this is suitable for video when your image motion is small. So sub pixel accuracies if you want to get. Um, it's just moving around that pixel. That is when these are very much suitable. Okay. Um, this is another example for motion estimation. Okay. Particularly um, before, as I mentioned, uh, if you want a, just a very uh, intuitive feel for optical flow, what you would do is 
for each pixel here you would see the corresponding uh, intensity mapping uh, with the consecutive uh, uh, in the consecutive image okay subsequent image that's what you would find out so that would give you the direction as well as the, uh, so the how much it has to move both in x and y that's what you would get there okay this is for example again uh, from one of the papers um, very long back papers so there is a dice which has been kept on a rolling disc so that's rotating and if you find out uh, the uh, optical flow which should give you at every pixel the motion estimation you would see that in the regions that are away from uh, say like where there is a uniform region you won't get anything because apparently the brightness would remain the same because if you assume I don't know but that platform which looks like a cake okay that platform for example is white there is no textural difference there so you hardly see anything there any difference there so it, it gives as if the uh, motion field is zero and uh, yeah there is some textural variations on the outer side of the rotating part and another interesting thing that you could observe here is mm, those uh, for that 3d object for those pixels which are closer to you there you see the motion large and those that are far away on that rotating disk you will see the motion small. This makes sense because whenever the object is closer uh, in that frame, even a small movement there in 2D it appears as a large movement compared to those pixels that are far away, right? So this is one uh, example of motion estimation using optical flow, right? Well, uh, so this essentially uses the entire image and is good for those cases where uh, you expect sub pixel motion or motion of few pixels not tens of pixels and other things okay yeah this is that's all the uh, introduction to what motion estimation is and in the next lecture you would see uh, you will we will start discussing about optical flow methods okay yeah um, uh, hope uh, the concepts are clear so see you in the next video lecture okay thanks